Celtic supporters all over the world. Welcome to the Celtic Forever podcast. Uh, a very quick post-match reaction to Celtic 6, Aberdeen now. What a performance, what a display. I wasn't expecting that, to be honest with you, even though I said in my prediction it would be 3-0 to Celtic, but Celtic wiped the floor with Aberdeen. Let's see how old you, John. How are you, John? I am good, I Sheep dispatching. A dispatching of sheep, as you say, John. Yeah, all, all joking aside, John. Aberdeen were nowhere near it. And by the way, that was nothing to do with Aberdeen. That was all down to Celtic, John. Aye, so Celtic were fantastic. I know Brendan was getting frustrated on the touchline, but I was more than happy with everything I've seen in that game from Celtic. I think they were unbelievable. It's the best I've seen them this season by by a mile. Yeah, but a big match uh, team, John. You know, we always turn up in these big matches in Scotland, don't we? Uh, so we turned up tonight. Uh, brilliant atmosphere as well, John. Obviously, the kickoff was delayed with this one with the smoke. Uh, but it just added, added to the atmosphere, but it was a bit frustrating with this, with this delay in the kickoff. Aye, 15 minutes delay or whatever it was. Look, we spoke about this a while ago. It's time for these pyros to get them out of the stadiums. It's delaying the kickoff. The atmosphere was red hot. Um, and then it was delayed for 15 minutes. It just totally killed it. But but it didn't really kill the atmosphere that much, to be honest with you. Because uh, once it started, I think both sets of fans were were really good. Aberdeen and Celtic fans, both sets, top form. Yeah, fair play to Aberdeen supporters, John, at the very end, still singing and dancing. You know, they were they were there for a party and the 6 nothing scoreline didn't affect that. So fair play to them. But the Celtic supporters, John, absolutely brilliant from start to finish. And no wonder we had a display like that from the Celtic lads. Um, just a wee bit of housekeeping before we get going any further, John. Nobody won the competition, obviously, and that was on Facebook and YouTube. So... Nobody had the 6 nothing anyway. Never mind a scorer, John. Nobody had the 6 nothing, So that will go into next weekend. But that doesn't matter, John, because as I said at the very top there, John, where did this performance come from? We were all, we were all expecting a very tough game. A struggle, actually. A lot of people won nothing, 2-1, 3-2. Some people were saying, you know, but nobody said 6 nothing as I say, John. Um, and I was listening to the, the game and I was watching bits of it as well because I'm out and about tonight. So... What I heard on the radio, John, there was absolutely no credit given to Celtic for this. It was all down, down to Aberdeen not turning up and no credit to Celtic. You know, BBC Radio Scotland, John, I think, you know, it was the same on the TV as well for what I heard. Shocking, John. Where, where's, where's Celtic's credit? Aberdeen were getting the credit all season long, but no credit for Celtic tonight. Know that I heard anyway. No, there wasn't any credit for Celtic on the TV either. It was all about Aberdeen. Um they're lacking energy because of the effort they put in against Rangers. They, they were a yard off it, etc. What utter nonsense. They played against a fantastic Celtic team in top gear and they basically get showed up for it there, which is, they're a, Aberdeen, they're a half-decent team, look. I'm not saying they're a bad team, but they're nowhere near the type of team Celtic are. Nowhere near it. So, I, you're right. These uh, pundits are saying it's Aberdeen uh, because they played against Rangers. On Wednesday night, Celtic played a game on Wednesday night as well. All right, they rested a few players, but what does that matter? Celtic rested players; they didn't rest the full team. They rested a few players, but what, what's Aberdeen playing against Rangers on Wednesday night? Go to Dave Anderson. Yeah, that's it, John. Celtic rested players, but they came on in the game as well. You've got to remember, there's just an excuse for these the, these people in the press and the BBC, John, and on uh, Premier Sports, John, uh, especially this guy Stuart, the co-commentator Stuart. John, um, he's looking for a foul at every goal Celtic scored. Uh, was it was his elbow on his shoulder? Was he was he slightly kicked before that? But you know, he's just looking for an excuse at every single goal Celtic scored. He's looking, he's pulling it back an extra minute to see if there was a foul. Celtic were just amazing tonight, John, and just played Aberdeen off the park. No need to look for fouls before goals to try and chop them off. There's no need for it. You know, it was it was pathetic from from Michael Michael Stewart, John. It really was. Um, but anyway, let's get into the game then, John. As I say, uh, the smoke delayed it for 15 minutes. Um, that was a bit frustrating for us all. Went even the supporters in the stadium. They, they were getting a wee bit frustrated. I heard I heard a few of them starting to boo. Um, but it doesn't matter. The game kicks off, John. And but and we noticed right away. There's no scales, so trustees came in with Carter Vickers at the back. I think that's maybe going to be Brendan's preferred partnership, John. It looks like it. 
listening to Brendan after the game, he obviously says he chose Trusty because of the pace that he's got. Now, if you remember right, Liam Scales was exposed for pace the last time we, we played Aberdeen. Can't remember the player that scored the goal, was it McGrath? Exposed yeah. uh, big Liam for pace. But apart from that, Liam done nothing wrong the whole game. He's just no the fastest defender in the world, but he's a fantastic defender. And the way Brendan's talking, that's why Trusty was put in ahead of skills. By the way, Jimmy Taylor, credit to him, he gave Celtic all the credit they deserved to say Celtic were a better team and all that stuff. So, fair play to him. He's no like these pundits, you know, looking for excuses. Yeah, excuse after excuse. And even Big Paddy Bonner, John, on the. I don't like to talk about Big Paddy Bonner because he's a Celtic legend, right? But even he was, you know, going on about it's Aberdeen this, it's Aberdeen that. Come on, give us a bit of credit, guys. You know, there's no need for it. It's a 6 nothing demolition of the second best team in Scotland. Give us a bit of credit. That's all we're looking for. I don't like to get annoyed at night, John, because of the performance, you know, it was just amazing. 25th minute, John, there's a yellow card for Callum McGregor for absolutely nothing. I was a bit concerned at that point because that's your captain. That's your anchor in the middle of the field, John, and he's got a yellow card earlier on. I I don't even think that was a free kick. There was absolutely nothing in that whatsoever. It wasn't a free kick. And it certainly wasn't a yellow card. So, I don't know, maybe just the ref wanted to show his authority early on in the game. and but it wasn't early, it was 20-odd minutes. But uh, there was absolutely no, no need at all to wave a yellow card or give a free kick there so I don't know what the ref was saying there uh, I thought bro- he was brilliant John Ka- Callum was brilliant I thought in the game um, the 1 to 10 individual scores is going to be very interesting you know to pretty low scores the last few games to, to, to see what happens tonight John but we'll get to that in about 5 minutes uh, let's get through the goals then John because there's plenty to get through 29th minute we go ahead it's a corner from Engels straight <laughs> on in a sixpence as you say John you like to say that to Big Vickers' heads, right into the back of the net, big power header for Vickers. We get a goal from a corner at last, and John, the big Cameron gets on the score sheet. Uh, this is the one Michael Stewart's especially looking for a free kick, you know, this one, as his hand on his shoulder, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it does go to VAR to check it, the goal's given, not a problem. Uh, what a beautiful corner from Engels, John, and a lovely finish for Big Vickers. I just agree with both points there. Nice finish for Carter Vickers. There's absolutely nothing in, in the, the foul that Stuart was talking about. I heard him going on about that. Absolutely nothing in it whatsoever. He says he's climbing on the defender's back, getting himself uh, a bit of leverage or whatever. No, look, there's nothing in it at all. He's bulleted at home. Keep her no chance. 1 0. Pick it out. Pick it out. Yeah, 2 0. Three minutes later, John Kyogo, and it's a lovely uh, counter attack from Maeda. And uh, we win the ball in the midfield. It breaks to Maeda. I think it's Kuhn that wins it, and he and he passes it through to Maeda. It's a 50-50 chase with Aberdeen defender. Maeda gets to it first, pulls it back. Kyogo's making the run into the box. A wee slight pass to Kyogo, and he bullets it in off the bar. John, another lovely finish, another beautiful assist from Maeda. What a game Maeda had as well, John. Um, but two nothing, John, and a, just a nice, a really really nice goal. Don. Dominant goal, you know. I didn't know what we've seen with this Aye. one, uh, and off the bar, beautiful. <laughs> he's lucky Kyogo went here. I thought he was going to miss it when I seen Kyogo was going to finish it. I'm thinking he's no been hitting the net recently, but I he finishes it beautifully. It hits the bar, and he's lucky it hits the underside of the bar, uh, high into the roof of the net, past the two defenders standing on the line. I think two defenders standing on the line, he puts it in between them. Aye, beautiful finish. Well done, the wee man. Yeah, the wee man was good as well. Never stopped, didn't you know? Uh, Andy gets his goal. Uh, so, yeah, 2 nothing, John. I need to keep my count on the goals here because I don't want to get lost. So, 3 nothing, John. In the 39th minute, uh, it's it's just another nice goal. And it's Maida this time. The hat-trick boy, Maida. Uh, an assist from uh, Kuhn. And a lovely assist from Kuhn as well. Uh, straight through. A lovely wee through ball. Like a FIFA game of FIFA. You press triangle, John. <laughs> and it's a through ball right to Maida. And he chips it sort of round the keeper. John, it's a wee chip for about 12 yards round the keeper. Uh, yeah, beautiful through pass from Nicholas. Um, and 3 nothing, John. Another beautiful finish, John. 3 nothing. It's all about the through ball for me, that one. That was perfectly weighted. Nicholas Kuhn, absolutely brilliant. Uh, but look, the finish was top class from my either as well. So, I, I beautiful finish. But the through ball, the weight of pass was uh, outstanding, Xander. It's, it's just, it was so nice to watch, you know, it was, you know, at this point of 3 nothing. you know, you know the game's over, 
you know, that's that finish, John. So um, the fans are just totally jubilant. I was jubilant, you know, I listened to most of it in the radio, actually, and, and I watched what I could as well. Um, just busy tonight. But I was over, over the moon, ecstatic, blasting horns and everything. Um, <laughs> so halftime whistle goes, John. Uh, you know, I'm listening to that radio. Aberdeen need to do this. Aberdeen need to do that. Aberdeen should have done this. Aberdeen should have done that. It's just pathetic. It really is. It's as if there's only one team on the park, John. I don't want to go too heavy here because of an outstanding performance and result. And we're into the final, John, against Motherwater Rangers. Um, but that just that just really annoyed me. It really did. Second half kicked off. Uh, we'll just go through the goals, John. Five minutes into the second half. It's um, Maida. Another goal from Maida, John. And it's a great run. An assist from Nicholas Kuhn. Uh, and it's just it's, it's just a tap into the back post, this one, isn't it? So, just all about the build-up again, this one, but uh, Maida kind of missed, John, for nothing. Hi, hi, nice finish from Maida. It's all about Nicholas Kuhn yet again. I think Nicholas Kuhn was amazing and he, uh, he, he puts it on a sixpence. <laughs> on <laughs> Maida's toe. And, yeah. uh, I pick it, I look, touching on what he says about, you don't want to go on about these pundits, but it's everywhere, Xander. They can't handle the fact that Aberdeen beat their beloved Rangers and Celtic dispatched Aberdeen like they were a, a bunch of five-year-olds, basically. They can't handle it. It's poor, John. I, I, and I, what I'm going to maybe do is clip it. I'm going to clip these comments and put them on a shot because that's how annoyed them are. So look out for that, folks. Hit your notification bell and you'll get a notification when I put that on a... Uh, YouTube folks, um, because when you listen to it, it's, it's quite annoying, it really is. Anyway, 4 nothing turns to 5 nothing eight minutes later, John's 58th, my 59th minute, uh, and this is the pick of the bunch for me, I think that's Kuhn. John, it's a beautiful left-footed finish, curler in off the bar, just a, a wee one step inside and curls it round the Aberdeen defence and the goalkeeper in off the bar. What another stunning goal. Uh, it's good to see Nicholas Kuhn back in the team, John. She's got an assist there. He's got a goal. Uh, pick of the bunch for me, that one, John. What do you think? Vorsprung Torsch Technique, as they say in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means, but I what a finish from Nicholas yeah. Kuhn. And off the bar, aye. Me, the wee man was brown tonight. Uh, aye. Probably my pick of the goals, that one. I thought that was a beauty, aye. Beautiful. In Grishen Spiegel. That's all I'll say about that one. Um, <laughs> that means a big game, doesn't it? Uh, a big goal. <laughs> I'll call it a big goal. Uh, all right, John, that's five. Uh, we're up to five, so there's one more to go. There's no point in going through any more that happened in this game, John. It was just total dominance, so there's no point in going through subs and yellow cards and stuff, apart from the McGregor one, because that was a concern, wasn't it, at the start? 6 nothing, 85th minute, five minutes before the end. We've got um, another Maida tap in, isn't it? But it's, it's all about the build-up. Nice way, Leo, from Bernardo to Johnston. Lovely run out of the box from Johnston. Crosses it across to Maida. It's another tap-in from a Japanese international, John. Another tap-in, but he's there. Right time, right place. Another nice goal. Another nice build-up. 6 nothing. Total demolition. Aye, I'm getting that confused with the other one that he scored. Uh, aye, the, the last one was the tap-in at the back post, wasn't it? Yeah. Aye, aye, Alistair Johnson, ball across, aye, Alistair Johnson that again, the night, unbelievable, unbelievable, what an engine that boy's got in him, aye, aye, nice finish, he's the right place, right time, that's all we can say about that, it wasn't he the hardest chance to miss, was it, just a tap in real at the back post, but he's right place, right time, he's burst into the box with that amazing pace that he's got, Aberdeen defenders were terrorised by my the other night, terrorised. Yeah, that's it, John, and it's um, that's all we're looking for off my dad to perform like that in every game, and uh, yeah, that and that's that's him at his best tonight with his his hat trick, John, and his assist as well. He got an assist for the Kyogo goal, didn't he? So brilliant, great performance, well done, guys, and six nothing. We're all over the moon. Referee blows the whistle, bang on ninety, John, and you can sort of understand because it's not a league game. We're not looking for goal for goal difference. The game's dead and buried. Six nothing. Blow the whistle in the ninetieth minute. I was quite happy with that. Aye, aye, I'm delighted with that. He could have added a couple of minutes on. Probably would have been a couple of minutes injury time, although there, there wasn't that many stoppages. Nicholas Kuhn, I think, was injured once, maybe. But I, I'm happy he just blew it in 90 minutes. That's, I think Aberdeen had had enough. They were, 
I don't think Casper Schmeichel had a save to make, did he? Had he had a couple of weak efforts. One for McGrath, his shot was as bad as his penalty on Wednesday night. Um, yeah. And a couple of crosses into the box that Casper caught. But Aberdeen never troubled Celtic the whole night. But that's due to Celtic pressing them, winning the ball up high, playing in near half. So it's all about Celtic, how good Celtic were. It's not the day but how bad Aberdeen were because of a hard game against Rangers on Wednesday. Boo hoo hoo. Every team was playing on Wednesday night. Yeah, Lovely. that's it. John, John, sorry, to be fair to the, the players and the manager, it's not them that's saying this. This is the Scottish press that's saying this. You know, this is it's pathetic. I know I keep saying it. It's excuse after excuse after excuse. As you say, both teams were playing on Wednesday night. Both teams, Celtic had a very hard slog against Dundee, John. That was uh, a 90 minute slog for Celtic at Celtic Park against the Dens, John. So, you know, both both teams had to put in just as much effort. You know, some people might even say Aberdeen had the easier game against Rangers. <laughs> aye, I'm one of them. Uh, yeah. Aye, aye. I, I think uh, because Rangers were beat on Wednesday by Aberdeen, the press were expecting them to beat Celtic as well. That's what it was all gearing up to before the game, half time, and then after the game. Not no after the game, but before the game. I'm not talking about after the game. We're all sick after the game. But before the game, it was all about what Aberdeen were going to do. Oh, this is amazing. This team are amazing. They're going to turn Celtic over. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. But, and like you say, it's no the Aberdeen players saying that. Or anybody from the Aberdeen team. It's the press. And uh, and I think it's all down to, because they beat Rangers, their beloved Rangers, they were praying and they were hoping, and I'm sure they were certain that Aberdeen were going to win that game. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, well said, John. Uh, just it's frustrating, isn't it? Anyway, John, over the moon. Into the final then, John. So, Motherwell Rangers tomorrow. Uh, it could be a Glasgow Derby final, but you never know. It might be Motherwell in the final. We're not even going to go that, John. It's, it's not a night for that. We'll maybe go into that when we're, when we're you know, we find out who it is we're, we're playing against. Um, just a wee quick word on the the Celtic, the Celtic and Aberdeen players. There's a wee bit of a nice connection there with them all at the end, shaking hands, you know, chatting to each other. You know, it was good to see that. That was that was okay. Quite happy with that. And then the Aberdeen supporters and the Celtic supporters just uh, they just brought a bright atmosphere to the game, John. It was a raucous atmosphere all night, wasn't it? It was uh, both sets of fans, Aberdeen fans, Celtic fans, both loving it. Two of them never stopped singing. Uh, and I like Aberdeen, you know, I like Aberdeen, you like Aberdeen as well, because they're rivals to Rangers, let's be honest. They are rivals, and they're the only team in Scotland that battle 100% against them every time they play them. But uh, maybe I'm being unfair to some other teams there, I don't know. But right now, I know Aberdeen are that team that battle against them. And uh, that's why we like Aberdeen, we've got a wee soft spot for them. But when it comes to playing Celtic, that soft spot goes right out the window, Zander. Yeah, that's it. OK, John, we'll just quickly wrap this up. We'll go through 1 to 10, individual scorings. I'm looking forward to this, John. What's your scorings? Casper Schmeichel, never dent today, 7. Carter Vickers, 8. Trusty, 9. Arthur Johnston, 9. Valley, I thought he was good. Give him an 8. Centre of the park, Carl McGregor, 9. Real Hitati, 8. Uh, Hoops other one? Engels, give him an 8 as well. Up front, Dyson Maeda, 9.5. Kyogo, give him a, give him an 8 for his lovely finish. And Nicholas Kuhn, 9.5 for him as well. High scores indeed. High praise indeed, John. So, yeah, yeah, I'll quickly run through mine. Uh, obviously, Casper will give him a 7. No much to do. Um, Alex Valley, 8. Alistair Johnson, 8.5. Two centre backs, I'll give them both an eight. Thought they played well, but um, I'd like to see Scales back in there soon as well. We don't want to see him dropped for, for, um, for any length of time, John. We've got to rotate it with the, the centre backs because they're three very decent centre backs. Uh, Callum, eight and a half. Engels, eight. I thought he had a decent game as well, John Arney. Um, thought he played well. Um, Hatati, I'll give him a seven and a half. He, he played well, but no quite as good as the rest. Um, Kyogo 8 Maeda 9.5 and Kuhn 9 so more or less practically similar to yours John 
Aye, aye, aye. Good performances all round the team the night. I thought every man played well the night. So, aye, I'm delighted with every player the night. I've nothing, you know, negative to say about any of them. I thought every every player to a man stood up to the, the, the challenge, Sander. Yeah, they sure did. Uh, proud of every one of them, John. That's that's what we've been looking for since the Dortmund game, isn't it? Because the form came down slightly, and it can only be expected after getting beat 7-1 like that. So a similar thing might happen to Aberdeen, John, after uh, that annihilation t- tonight. Um, so it's looking good, John. We're in the final of the League Cup. We're nine points ahead of Rangers in the league. Aberdeen have just been you know, destroyed 6 nothing, so their heads might go down as well. So all in all, it's just been a good night. Very good night. Uh, who's your man, man in the match, by the way? Uh, it's got to my either, John Scott, isn't it? Although Kuhn was brilliant as well. Callum was outstanding. Johnson is usual good self. You know, you could pick any one of them, but you've got to pick the, the guy that puts the ball in the net three times, I suppose, John. So it's dying for me. Three goals, an assist. He's closing down, tracking back, etc., etc. It was unbelievable, wasn't it, Dyson Maida? So was Nicholas Kuhn. He was unbelievable as well. But because of the hat trick, I think both players were outstanding. I'm going to give it to Maida as well. Yeah. OK, All right, fair enough, John. Have you just a wait? The next matchup for us is Leipzig on Tuesday night. Uh, we're going into this one on top for him. Aye, well, that's going to give the team a lift. You know, that's what Brendan was looking for. Uh, we have to mention Brendan's try to kick the ball into the park and slip slipping yet. You seen that, aye? Aye, I've seen that. It's funny, wasn't it? I think Martin O'Neill done that a similar thing, by the way, back in the day. He done a very similar thing, where he kicked the ball and, and slipped. Uh, so, yeah, that, uh, if Martin O'Neill can do it, I'm sure Brenton can do it as well. Um, 10 out of 10 for that dive, superb. And he got big for it as well. <laughs> aye, aye the ref, he was, the ref was laughing, but... Brendan showed a bit of frustration because was it Hitati that hit the ball or was it me that hit the ball off Matati? Matati. Yeah. <laughs> Hitati. Uh, somebody hit it off of somebody anyway and it went out of the park <laughs> and uh, Brendan was raging and obviously uh, did that somersault which was beautiful. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> everybody had a laugh at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John, uh, uh, it's just going to boost our confidence and it really is. Um, and what a marker to put down as well, John. Maybe this press, this Scottish press, maybe one day they'll give us a bit of credit. You know, look at the credit Rangers got in the 90s, John, when they were winning their league titles and their cups. You know, it was Rangers of this, Rangers of that. Everything's superb. I know it's, it's all down to Celtic have got more money. You know, what do you expect? It's absolutely disgusting. Give Celtic Football Club the credit they deserve. That's the bottom line. Um, all right, John, I'll catch you for a preview of um, the Leipzig game on Monday night. All right, Xander, I'll speak to you later. Hail, hail, mate. Hail, hail, John. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Um, Demolition Dons. See you later, John. See you later.